Hey, guess what? I rebranded the podcast. Here's why. So many of us have spent our lives saying no to ourselves and yes to all those around us. This yes, no imbalance leaves us feeling drained and numbed out and going through the motions of our lives. We overwork, we overgive, we overeat, we overdo, we overachieve, and we know we're meant for more. If you've landed here, know this, it is possible to feel fueled by your life. It's possible to find joy in your days. It's possible to create ease and freedom in this next chapter. Don't wait for the diagnosis. Don't wait for the depression. Don't wait for the rock bottom. It's time to give yourself permission to find clear way to and live from your yes. Welcome to your yes filled life. Welcome to your yes filled life. I'm your host, Brenda Winkle, educator, healer, speaker, guide, and fierce advocate for your yes. I help sensitive and successful men and women find, reclaim, and live from their full embodied yes. Through empowering you to understand your energetic hygiene, establish healthy boundaries, and heal your nervous system, you'll be able to create your yes-filled life and move through your days with more freedom, more ease, and more joy. You'll hear inspiring stories of people who found their full-bodied yes, thought leaders who pursued their own dreams and are living life on their terms, and learn new ways to find the courage, joy, ease, and freedom to more fully step into your yes-filled life. Say no to the good so you can say yes to the great. Join me on this journey to discover your yes-filled life. Whether you're looking to break free from the golden handcuffs, start a new business, find your dream job, or simply live with more intention and mindfulness, I've got you covered. Let's explore the possibilities together and make your dreams a reality. Ready? Let's do this. Let's get you to your Yes, build life. I am so excited to be sitting here today with you recording this very first episode on Your Yes Filled Life, the rebrand of the Waves of Joy podcast. So the Waves of Joy podcast was launched in April of 2022, and there were 77 episodes recorded under that name. During the last year, Waves of Joy podcast found its way to the top 5% of all podcasts globally with a listen score of 29. And I just can't tell you how much that means to me and how excited I am about it. But I realized through the course of this year that it's about so much more than joy. Yes, joy is essential. Yes, we need to create ways to find more joy in our lives. But the way to that joy is to say yes. To say yes to the inner nudges that you get. To say yes to the desires and yearnings you have. You have been put here on the planet to do something really special. And I tell you what, you can be in service to others and not a servant to others. And I invite you to join me in this journey to find your yes. Saying yes is not a one-time thing. It's not one decision. It can be. I mean, it can all start with one decision, but it's really the decision to show up for yourself day after day after day after day. To show up for yourself when it's not convenient. To show up for yourself when you don't have the approval of others. <laughs> to show up for yourself when you're feeling scared. And to show up for yourself when you're just feeling uncertain. So there are ways that we can show up for ourselves every single day. Check in with yourself. And what I mean by that is 
get curious about is the thing that you're saying yes to really a full body yes? Or is it a yes out of obligation? Now, before you go get ready to tell me, but Brenda, if I don't do it, who will do it? Well, the answer to that question is it might be that nobody does it for a while. Or it might be that there's somebody standing in the wings wishing that they could have the role that you currently have. It might be that somebody standing in the sidelines has a deep desire to do the work that right now you're doing out of obligation. I invite you to think about what it would mean for you if you allowed yourself to fully say yes. Sometimes we get scared because we think that every relationship in our life is going to change when we start to say yes to ourselves. And you know, it's true. Your loved ones are going to feel a shift, but it doesn't mean you have to blow the whole thing up. It might mean that you have to redefine some boundaries. It might mean that you have to have a conversation. And I'm here to teach you how to do both of those things. And it's also possible that the relationships that you're currently in aren't aligned with who you are becoming or who you want to be. And that gets to be here too. So as we journey into this yes-filled life together, I'd love to take you behind the scenes. So in October of 2022, I sold my house because I knew that I wanted to run this business full time. And I also wanted the freedom and flexibility of not having the the role of a homeowner. And I wanted a little extra cash. Let's just be honest. So I sold the house in October and I moved into an apartment that was pretty evenly spaced between my daughter's work and where she lives in her apartment. She also moved out in October of 22 into her own place with a roommate and took our dog, by the way. (laughs) Jane, the Chawini now lives most of the time with Maya, although she spends a lot of time with me still, and she's here today as I'm recording. So I picked a place really fast. The reason is Our house sold in three days. Now, when your house sells in three days, I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but when my house sold in three days, I felt very excited. And also like I really wanted a place to land. Now, not only did my house sell in three days, but my daughter had just moved out. My dog Hutch had died in July, and I'll just admit that I was not making the most clear decisions that I'm capable of making in October of 2022. However, (laughs) I found myself renting this apartment because it was centrally located between my daughter's work and her home. And really, that was the box that I needed to have checked. I don't know if you've been an empty nester before, and if you still have kids at home or you haven't had kids, it's it's really interesting when you realize they're moving out for the last time. You know, when my daughter moved to college and she moved into the dorm, I knew that there was a 50-50 chance she might end up not coming home in the summer, but I also knew there was a chance that she would. Well, it turned out after after her freshman year, she ended up moving back in with me for another year and a half. And so this time I knew there was a, a relative permanence about her move and it really hit my system differently. And it wasn't that I wasn't ready for her to be on her own. I'm so proud of her. And I was also ready for some more freedom and some more flexibility because She was 21 or just getting ready to turn 21 at the time that she moved out. But the thing was, I had such a level of loneliness and fear of loneliness when she moved out and she took our dog, Jane, and I just lost Hutch that 
I needed to be centrally located for her, like for my own mental health. That's what I needed. And so I gave that to myself. I knew at the time that the apartment wasn't totally aligned for me, but I decided I could manage anything for a year. Well, that has since changed. (laughs) And there were some things that happened that I don't need to get into, but it is not going to work out for me to stay here for a, a year. In fact, I've given notice. I'm moving on June 14th or June 15th, one of those days. And I don't, at the time of this recording, know totally where I'm going to move. I have some ideas and I, I've gone to see some properties and, you know, if nothing else works out, I'm prepared to just go wheels up for a while and go Airbnb to Airbnb. It's all good. I have complete faith that everything is going to work out for me because it always does. Everything always works out for you too, especially when you make everything always works out for me, your mantra. So anyway, You know, if I would be doing things in a conventional way, in a way that people teach is wise or responsible, I would make myself suffer through the next, what is it, like six months almost, five months of living in an apartment that is not suited for me. And when I say not suited for me, I mean that it is a tax on my nervous system to be in this space. And that just doesn't work for me. You know, the more embodied I get through breath work, Reiki, Theta healing, and the the more in tune I get with the signals my body is giving me, the less tolerant I am of anything that does not feel good. And this apartment does not feel good <laughs> for a lot of reasons. So there are some things that we're taught in society, like the sunk cost fallacy is one. And that would be the fallacy that I've got so much money into this, I should just stay in and see it out. And the other thing is the way that we just excuse our feelings. And we say things like, well, gosh, you know, it's just five more months. I could wait five more months and then find a place to live, but do the math on that. That's 150-ish days. I'm not willing to put myself through something for 150 days that does not feel good. Now, if we take this and change the context, let's take the context to your shoes, okay? Let's pretend that you have your favorite pair of sneakers on and you're going on a hike. On the hike, you get a little pebble that's right underneath your heel stuck in your shoe. Now, if you're hiking and you get something stuck in your shoe, what are you going to do? Probably you're going to pull over at the first opportunity and get whatever's in your shoe out of your shoe so that you don't have to walk in pain, right? Well, if you treat your life the same way, You have so much more capacity. And what I mean by that is, if you know that what you're signing yourself up to do is going to cause you pain for a series of days or weeks, imagine if you would let this be okay with you if it was a rock in your shoe. We have more respect for our physical pain than we do for our emotional pain or our mental pain. And that's where I come in with the yes-filled life. The yes-filled life means that you put your comfort, your needs, your desires ahead of anything else. And here's why. If you have something that is causing you pain, discomfort, unease, it is really impacting your capacity to show up for people in your life. It's impacting your capacity to show up for your job. If you are miserable, you are not doing your best work. If you're miserable, it's difficult for you to show up in your relationships as your full self. When you prioritize your feeling good, 
you get to show up differently. That means work is going to go more smoothly. It means your relationships are richer and more authentic because you have more capacity to show up for the people in your life. Energy has no walls. And so if you're miserable in one area of your life, you are kidding yourself to think that it's not impacting other areas of your life. So for example, if you are miserable at work, are you really telling yourself that it's not impacting your relationship at home? Because I guarantee you that your partner or spouse or friends or kids would beg to differ. Here's how I know. There was a period of time, not so long ago, that for three years, I said every weekday when my daughter asked me how my day was, I said, well, I'm going to go back tomorrow. I'm not ready to go sell coconuts on the beach in Bali. I said it for three years. Quite frankly, I had forgotten that I said that all the time until I went to Bali this year. And my 21-year-old daughter was really anxious about me going to Bali. And I finally sat down with her and I said, why are you so afraid of me going to Bali? And she, her, her eyes filled with tears and she said, I'm worried you're not coming back. And I was kind of stunned. And I said, well, of course I'm coming back. What would make you think I'm not coming back? And she said, well, you always used to say you were going to go sell coconuts on the beach in Bali. And I did. I really did. I said that every day. Now, do you think I was showing up as my best mom during those years? Well, I can tell you one thing for sure. I tried. I really genuinely tried. But I also know that my daughter could see it. She could sense it. And it impacted my romantic relationships too. Because when I was home and I was angry or stressed or resentful or dreading getting ready to go to work, my partner mentioned it. In fact, I remember one partner saying, you know, all you do is complain about your job. Why do you still go? Why haven't you changed careers? Now, that was just a snapshot. You know, that relationship didn't last that long. But his point is well taken. Sometimes if we look at something from someone else's perspective, or we have someone else ask us a question, it really can shift our perspective. So that's what I'm doing here for you. So back to your relationships. If you can, even just for today, just for today, prioritize your well-being. Make sure that you feel good in every area. Are your clothes comfortable? Are your shoes comfortable? Have you had enough water to drink? Are you hungry? Are you well rested? Do you have enough time to think about doing your job? Time of just quiet so that you can integrate the experiences you've had today? Just for today, I want you to prioritize that. Or let me put it in another way. I invite you. I invite you to prioritize those things and then just see what happens. For some people, they're going to feel very, very guilty about prioritizing their well-being. And you know what? I don't blame you for feeling that way. Society has taught us that that is the way, especially if you're a woman. And as my network grows to include women from all over the world, I'm learning that that expectation is worldwide. And so I think it's time for us to really learn to take great care of ourselves, to say yes to ourselves so that we can show up fully in every area of our lives. Thank you so much for listening today to the new Yes Filled Life podcast. If you liked this episode, would you please consider sharing it with a friend? And you know what? My dream 
my dream of dream of dreams is to speak internationally. And the way that I see this coming about, and of course it could change and and morph and, and do all the things, but the way I see it coming about is through this podcast. So if you could also please give the podcast a rating and a review, especially with the rebrand, it would mean so much. It would really help the podcast. Thank you so much for listening to your Yes Filled Life. And if you haven't recently visited my website, there's some changes there too. I invite you to go have a look at brendawinkle.com because it's all new. And I've got some new freebies coming your way in a week or two. So be sure that you subscribe or follow the podcast wherever you're listening, because you are not going to want to miss these. Bye for now. Until next time.